Welcome to this CME webcast, the second in a series of three that explores topics relevant to cyclin-dependent kinase, or CDK4 and 6 inhibition in breast cancer. I'm Dr. Mark Pegram from Stanford University, where I direct the breast oncology program and co-direct the Stanford uh, translational oncology program. In this webcast, I will briefly review the mechanism of action of CDK4-6 inhibitors. Then I will present information on the discovery of palbociclib and the data supporting its FDA approval as the first-in-class CDK4-6 inhibitor. We will start with this animated video showing the role of cyclin D1 CDK4-6 pathway and the mechanism of action of CDK4-6 inhibitors in breast cancer. In order to better understand the biology of the signaling pathways and how they relate to the mechanism of action of CDK4-6 inhibitors, we have prepared some animation that illustrate these points. One approach to treating advanced estrogen receptor positive breast cancer is by targeting the cell cycle. In a healthy cell, the cell cycle is well controlled. However, in a cancer cell, the cell cycle is deregulated from mutations or upstream signals, causing cancer cells to proliferate at faster rates than healthy cells. For example, in estrogen receptor positive breast cancer cells, the deregulation of the cell cycle is caused by the overexpression and overactivation of growth factor and estrogen receptor pathways. When these pathways become activated, they instigate a cascade of mitogenic signals. A wide variety of mitogenic signaling pathways converge at the level of cyclin D1 messenger RNA and protein upregulation. Cyclin D1 binds to and activates cell cycle-dependent protein kinases, or CDK, 4 and 6. The activated cyclin D1 CDK4-6 complex mediates the phosphorylation and inactivation of the tumor suppressor retinoblastoma protein. In a normal state, activated RB protein inhibits the cell cycle from progressing through the G1 phase. The phosphorylation of the RB, or retinoblastoma protein, releases E2F transcription factors from the protein complex, causing the cell cycle to progress from G1 to S phase and resulting in cancer cell proliferation. There are three selective ATP competitive inhibitors that have been developed to target the cyclin D1 CDK4-6 complex. These small molecule inhibitors block the cyclin D1 CDK4-6 complex and prevent the phosphorylation of RB protein. This stops the cell cycle from progressing to the S phase, preventing cell cancer proliferation or growth. In addition to causing transient G1 cell cycle arrest, preclinical evidence suggests that these inhibitors can also cause senescence and apoptosis. Targeting the cell cycle with CDK4-6 inhibitors is a promising treatment option for patients with hormone receptor positive breast cancer. Now in terms of palbociclib, the uh, demonstration of activity unique to luminal ER positive disease uh, was discovered by Richard Finn at UCLA. In these experiments, a panel of 47 human breast cancers and immortalized cell lines representing all of the known intrinsic molecular subtypes of human breast cancer were treated empirically with palbociclib in order to determine the inhibitory concentration 50% values. Some of the cell lines were ex exquisitely sensitive to palbociclib in terms of growth inhibition, while others were relative resistant. The most sensitive cell lines were sensitive at low nanomolar, in some cases even fractional nanomolar concentrations, while others were resistant altogether. Dr. Finn and colleagues at UCLA noted that in the most sensitive cell lines, they all shared a similar phenotype. They, were, they tended to be estrogen receptor positive, have a luminal uh, gene expression profile, and in many cases, they had high levels of RB protein expression and cyclin D1 expression was also higher in the most sensitive lines, or P16 levels, which puts the brakes on the RB pathway, uh, was lower in sensitive cell lines. Now, in terms of the evolution of this story, CDK4-6 inhibitors uh, preferentially affect tumor cells as opposed to normal cells because they have dysregulation of cell cycle progression and uncontrolled proliferation indeed. In addition uh, to causing G1 cell cycle arrest, uh, they can also contribute to senescence and apoptosis phenotypes. 
uh, this class of inhibitors also appears to have synergy with endocrine therapy, as was demonstrated in the original paper by Dr. Finn. Uh, they also demonstrate anti-tumor activity in preclinical models of breast cancer, but also in other malignancies, including melanoma and glioblastoma, as examples. Based on the preclinical observations made by Dr. Finn and the UCLA group, this led to the testable hypothesis that patients with luminal ER positive disease, particularly those that have markers for dysregulation of the RB pathway, including cyclin D1 amplification and or loss of P16, these patients were subject to a randomized phase two open label clinical trial to test this hypothesis of the activity of the CDK4-6 inhibitors in combination with aromatase inhibition with letrozole. The patients enrolled in the study were postmenopausal with advanced disease that were ER positive and HER2 negative, and they had no prior therapy for advanced disease. A total of 160 pa 65 patients were randomized in this phase two open label study. Patients were randomized to letrozole in standard dose and scheduled 2.5 milligrams PO daily on days 1 through 28 uh, with palbociclib given 125 milligrams PO daily just on days 1 through 21 versus the control arm of letrozole 2.5 milligrams PO daily throughout. There were two separate cohorts in this randomized phase 2 study. In the first cohort, unselected patients that were ER positive and HER2 negative in the first-line metastatic setting were randomized. And in part two of the study, involving 99 subjects, only patients with cyclin D1 amplification and or loss of P16 were allowed to be enrolled. So two separate cohorts. Now, in the overall combination of parts one and two together, there were 156 subjects with a median follow-up duration of 27.9 months. In the overall patient population of the combination of both cohorts, palbociclib plus letrozole yielded a median progression-free survival of over 20 months compared to just half that, 10 months, in the letrozole alone control arm, yielding a hazard ratio of approximately 0.5 and a p-value that is highly statistically significant. Now, when you compare those subjects in part one, which were not selected based on biomarkers, to those in part two that had either cyclin D overexpression and amplification or loss of P16, you can see that in each case there was retained a highly statistically significant improvement in hazard ratio favoring the palbociclib letrozole arm. In part one, in the unselected patients, the distribution was 26.1 months versus 5.7 months for a hazard ratio of approximately 0.3. And in part two, the biomarker selected cohort, this range was 18.1 months versus 11.1 months for the control with a hazard ratio of approximately 0.5, again with statistical confidence. Obviously, being a randomized phase two trial um, with only a fraction of the patients subject to the biomarker analysis, it's premature to say that there's a biomarker above and beyond luminal A and positive estrogen receptor expression that is necessary for selection of patients. But the phase three trials will continue the biomarker campaign to see if there might be biomarkers that are even more robust than luminal ER positive uh, for future study. Now, in the Paloma one trial, there was also uh, an improvement in response rate that was apparent in favoring the randomized subjects to letrozole plus palbociclib, who enjoyed uh, an overall response rate of 43% compared to just 33% in the letrozole control arm. The clinical be benefit rate, which includes both the responders as well as those subjects who enjoyed stable disease for a period of at least six months or more, uh, there was a striking uh, improvement in clinical benefit rate favoring the palbociclib randomized subjects to 81% compared to just 25.8% in the letrozole control arm. Now, uh, palbociclib does have unique toxicities. In particular, it's known to cause neutropenia. Indeed, grade three or four neutropenia was reported in 54% of patients in the palbociclib plus letrozole group versus just 1% in the letrozole alone control arm. However, in all subjects in this phase two randomized trial, there were no cases of febrile neutropenia or neutropenia-related infection that were reported by the investigators. Leukopenia was also observed in 19% of patients in the palbociclin plus letrozole group versus none in the letrozole group as expected. 
Now, in terms of serious adverse events that occurred in more than one patient in the palbociclib plus letrozole arm, pulmonary embolism was observed in 4% of subjects, back pain in 2%, and diarrhea in 2%. Patient discontinuation because of adverse events was observed in 13% of palbociclib plus letrozole randomized subjects versus just 2% in the letrozole arm. It's important to note this, this is an open label and not a placebo-controlled trial. And as I'll show you in a later slide, you can compare these results of patient discontinuation in the open label trial versus some data from a follow-on phase three study that I will show you uh, later in this presentation. The Paloma II trial uh, is a phase three randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, fully enrolled, ongoing study, again of postmenopausal women with advanced ER-positive HER2-negative breast cancer with no prior systemic anti-cancer therapy for their advanced disease. So nearly an identical study design to the Paloma I randomized phase two, but this time uh, more robust statistical power uh, by virtue of the fact this is a phase three large randomized controlled trial. Again, the randomization is to letrozole in standard dose and schedule along with palbociclib, 125 milligrams daily on days 1 through 21, versus letrozole alone, 2.5 milligrams POQ day uh, plus placebo. The Paloma 3 trial design is another phase 3 randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial which is fully enrolled and has been reported. This trial involved patients with any menopausal status, advanced ER positive HER2 negative breast cancer that had relapsed or progressed during prior endocrine therapy. 521 subjects were enrolled in this trial and they were randomized to receive fulvestrin, 500 milligrams IM on days 1 and 15 of cycle 1 and then on day 1 of each 28 days cycle subsequently plus palbociclib, 125 milligrams PO daily on days 1 through 21, with one week off, then repeat each 28-day cycle. The control arm was fulvestrant 500 alone on the same dose and schedule as in the experimental arm, and this trial is also placebo-controlled as shown. In terms of the results, the baseline characteristics in this cohort, uh, the median age was uh, 57 years, 79% were postmenopausal, 60% had visceral disease, and 79% were considered sensitive to their prior endocrine therapy manipulation. At interim analysis, results have been presented and now published in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, showing the median progression-free survival in the palbociclib plus fulvestrin arm of 9.2 months compared to just 3.8 months in the fulvestrant plus placebo arm, hazard ratio 0.422 with a p-value that is highly significant. Adverse events in this randomized phase three trial included uh, the most common grade three, four adverse events uh, were neutropenia, 79% versus 3.5%, leukopenia, 46% versus 4%, fatigue, 38% versus approximately 27%. No difference in the rate of febrile neutropenia in the palbociclib plus fulvestrin group versus placebo was noted. Patient discontinuation because of adverse events. Interestingly, in this placebo-controlled trial, just 2% of the subjects discontinued due to adverse events in the palbociclib plus fulvestrin arm compared to 1.7% in the fulvestrin plus placebo arm. There are ongoing studies of palbociclib in the breast cancer setting, including the PEARL trial, which is now recruiting. This is a phase three open label trial that will compare exomustane plus palbociclib versus capecitabine in a one-to-one -one randomization ratio for patients with hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer who are resistant to treatment with non steroidal AIs. Penelope B is also currently recruiting. This is a phase three trial it will examine post-neoadjuvant treatment with palbociclib plus endocrine therapy in hormone receptor positive patients with residual disease following chemotherapy and surgery. In terms of practical use of palbociclib, it's important to emphasize that the initial starting dose is the 125 milligram daily tablet on days 1 through 21. 
because of the propensity for neutropenia, it is critical to monitor complete blood counts uh, during uh, each cycle. In particular, a baseline CBC prior to starting palvocyclob is indicated and at the beginning of each cycle, as well as a day 14 count on the first two cycles with dose modification or dose delay as clinically indicated. In terms of dose modification, there are smaller tablets commercially available. Uh, the first dose reduction can be to 100 milligrams daily on days 1 through 21. And if further dose modification is required, a second dose reduction can be employed down to 75 milligram tablets daily on days 1 through 21. If dose reduction below 75 milligrams per day is required, a discontinuation is recommended. These are the dose modification schemes as they appear in the prescribing information uh, in the FDA uh, package insert. Uh, for grade one or two neutropenia, no dose modification or adjustment is required. However, for grade three neutropenia, no dose adjustment is required. However, repeat the CBC in one week's time and withhold initiation of the next cycle until recovery of neutropenia to grade less than or equal to two. If, however, in the context of grade three neutropenia, if fever is an accompanying feature and or documentation of infection, then it's recommended to not only withhold the palbociclib until the next cycle until recovery to grade less than or equal to two, but also resume at the next lower dose. So the first dose modification would be from 125 milligrams down to 100. And if there are further grade three events accompanying uh, fever and or infection or grade four neutropenia, uh, you would dose modify accordingly uh, to 75 milligrams indeed. In summary, palbociclib was the first FDA approved CDK4-6 inhibitor for breast cancer treatment. This was approved in February of 2015. Palbociclib efficacy and safety in estrogen receptor positive breast cancer was established in the Paloma 1 trial in combination with letrozole. Paloma 2 and Paloma 3 are ongoing studies that you should look forward to further updates at the 2015 San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. The initial starting dose for palbociclib is 125 milligrams per day. Neutropenia is the most common adverse event. CBC should be monitored before starting therapy and at the beginning of each cycle, as well as on day 14 of the first two cycles. Dose modification and or delay in starting treatment cycles is recommended for those patients who develop grade three neutropenia in the context of fever or infection or grade four neutropenia. With that, I thank you for participating in this webcast. I hope it will enrich your practice and I encourage you to participate in two other webcasts in this series.